Morning. Morning. Welcome to our 11 o'clock service here at Trinity. If you are a visitor, first timer, please see one of the ushers after the service and they have a small gift for you. Uh, I hope everyone has had a chance to take advantage of the open house which we had this morning at the Life Center. If not, uh, maybe we can do that again in the near future. Our nominations team will meet Monday at 7 p.m. The youth children's team will meet Thursday at 5.30 p.m. and that will be in the fellowship hall. If you can, be a Voyages volunteer at the Voyages Day Camp on June 27th through July 1st, especially on June 27th and 28th. Please call the church office. I think Duffy has an announcement now. Vacation Bible School coming up July 21st through the 23rd, so just a little over a month away. So um, we've got our sign out, and I think registration forms are ready, or they will be soon in the next week. So just be um, spreading the word about that and inviting people to come out and um, join us for our food truck party-themed VBS. We will have a meeting this Thursday for um, children and youth committee and anybody really who has um, a desire to help us and uh, volunteer in some way, please come to that meeting on Thursday, this Thursday in the fellowship hall at 5.30. We will be discussing all things VBS. Thank you. I believe Jean Bushka has an announcement to make this morning. Good morning. Good morning. I just wanted to let you guys know next week is the big, big week next Sunday. Um, we are leaving for Carolina Cross Connections. The majority of us are leaving at 8.15 um, next um, Sunday, except for Johnny, Kathy, and Duffy, and Pastor Brian. Still got to have church, right? <laughs> so, Anyways, so I just wanted to thank everybody for the support um, this Right at the end of the service, Pastor Brian is going to be doing a commissioning. Um, we're just going to ask everybody, if you feel generous, um, if you would like to make a small donation, cash donation by this Wednesday, to kind of help offset the cost of gas. Uh, you know, we all know that gas has gone up. Um, Banner Elk is a little bit of a drive. but um, So anyways, if you would like to donate, please just have the a cash donation by Wednesday. And thank you for all the support and assistance in making this trip possible. It doesn't even seem real, but it's actually next week. So, <laughs> um, But anyways, and uh, we're going to be hands and feet for Christ up there and there. So um, we're and anybody asks me, we still don't know exactly. We got our project assignments, but I did talk to the camp director um, this past week. And so, so we are looking forward to going there. So appreciate it. A few more announcements. The single, single again, will meet next Sunday at Paula's Italian Restaurant at 12:30. Uh, if you're interested, please use the sign-up sheet. And mark your calendars for July 7th at 7 p.m. for an ice cream in the Fellowship Hall. We'll have an update on the status of the Methodist Church and Trinity's options following the annual conference. And please use the pew pads to register your attendance this morning. Thank you, Bob. And our last two, we have our history moment for today. And if you look in your bulletins, on June the 12th, 1744, David Brainerd was a missionary to the New England Indians. And he was ordained by the Presbyterian Church. And within the next three years, he enjoyed success in his missionary efforts. And he died of tuberculosis at the age of 29. So we celebrate. Um, David Brainerd's uh, missionary efforts here in the United States. Our opening prayer is printed in our bulletins and let us prepare to pray together. Everlasting God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and ever live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Grant that we may always hold firmly and joyfully to this faith, 
and living in praise of your divine majesty may finally be one in you who are three persons in one God forever and ever. Amen. And at this time, we invite our children to come forward for children's time. Good morning. These are the members of our church who are going on the Carolina Cross Connection mission team. Yes. Hey, are you going? I am going. Yes. Why are you going? Are you going away from here for a little bit? Yes, we are going to Banner Elk, North Carolina, which is in the western part of the state, and we're going to help um, repair or do building projects there for families that are in need. And we want to thank the whole church for all the things that they have done to help make this possible. But one thing I would like from y'all is to pray for us. Yesterday, yes. All right. Well, sometimes that's whenever we take pictures. It's a little bit different than what we see in real life. <laughs> so I invite you to look out in the congregation and see the people that are wearing green shirts. And those are some of the people we're going to pray for. And during this week, I want to give you these sheets of how other people, how you can help others. We like to be we like to or want to treat other people like the way that we want to be treated. Treat others as you want to be treated. That's what it says. Yes, and there are some people helping clean up at their home. I just want that. I just want this one. Okay. Get one for Dolly, too. All right, there you go for Dolly. So we're going to invite the congregation to pray with us that God will remind us to pray for our mission team. So let's do that together. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for your love, thank you for your love. and thank you for, the opportunities thank you for the opportunities you give for us to serve. Be with our mission team, Be with our mission team. And, us. and us as we go through our weeks, as we go through our weeks. serving others and serving you. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And now you can go to worship and wonder with Miss Duffy. And we invite everyone to stand for our first hymn, which is in the worship and songbook, 3003, How Great is Our God. Please rise as you are able. Good morning, Trinity. Let's sing about how great is our God. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice himself in light and darkness tries to hide it trembles at his voice it trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and we will see how great is our God. Age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead Great is our God. 
our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise, my heart will sing how great is our God. In the same songbook, if you're using that one, 3096, Gentle Shepherd, you're using the worship there. be seated. This morning we have a guest speaker. Um, Mr. Miller, Dick Miller, will be coming to share with us from the Gideons to give us an update of their ministry. Uh, by 
Bibles and scriptures around the world to uh, many different countries, and we've given out over two and a half billion since uh, we first started in um, over 120 years ago. We, uh, we're business men and women who are made up of uh, people just of congregation just like I'm talking to right now. We try and um, witness and distribute God's word uh, to people who are looking for uh, the hope that Jesus provides. We try and put the go back in the Great Commission as it states in the, in the Bible. And um, one of the things that we try and do is we try and get into many countries. Right now we're in about 200 different countries. We distribute Bibles like this. This is a P, what we call PWT, is Personal Workers Testament. And we also give uh, Bibles into hotels and motels, which you're probably more familiar with in this, in this type of format. We try and uphold the seven spiritual gifts of our organization, which is the, we, are God, we are members of God's book, which is the Bible. We are a faith, a prayer, a separate walk of compassionate heart who witness and give. In 2019, I had uh, uh, the pleasure of trying to uphold these seven spiritual gifts by going on a, a scripture blitz to New York City. If you're not aware of it, there's about 15, uh, 53 different dialects are spoken in New York City of about 8 million people. And we had uh, 284 Gideon's auxiliaries from 21 different states ascend on New York City for one whole week and we distributed out over 150,000 of these scriptures and Bibles. We distributed to places like assisted living facilities, hospitals, medical offices, police precincts, fire stations, schools, colleges, and prisons. And we have a new burn camp here, which we do basically the same thing. We even go to the jails and prison ministers here locally, and we also go to the county fair and Mumfest. Wherever we can get into walks of life to distribute God's word and, and, and share and witness to those who do not know him. But we can only accomplish these goals and uh, scripture distribution because of your help. And that's why I'm here today. First, we need your prayers. Continue to keep praying. You prayed for us in the past, and we really appreciate that. You know, and <clears throat> the last statistics I saw, his word has yet to get out to about 5 billion people in this world who do not know about Jesus. And so we ask for your prayers to help um, knock down those borders and open up the doors to where we get into those countries. And in the countries that we are in, approximately 200, about 85% of those cannot afford to even buy these personal workers' testaments, which are only about $1.20 still to this day and $5 for a complete Bible that we place in the, in the hotels and motels. So we, we just ask you to pray for those available resources. One of the resources we, we ex extend to the churches is the Gideon Card Program, in which uh, Brother Jerry Cox in, from our camp, who's sitting right here this morning, is uh, one of our chairpersons, along with a lady from one of our auxiliary side. And last year, they did a tremendous job through the Gideon Card Program. We're really thanking a lot of the churches for doing this. And again, this is only a, uh, if you decide to give, this is only $1.20 and $5 for the, for the for a full Bible. And if we place a full Bible in a hotel or motel, it has a chance of reaching 2,500 people in a six-year lifespan of the Bible, and we constantly replace them. If you, now, if you would now, you can look at your uh, insert, Gideon Bible inserts. If you open them up, you'll see another testimony inside. But on the inside flap <clears throat> is a, a way of giving to the uh, Gideons if you so feel, feel led to give. You can either give through cash check or credit card. And uh, on the back is uh, if you use your mobile phone, you like using technology, is a quick reaction code back there. And you can give it monthly if you want to, a little over $10 a month. We'll give out 125 of these uh, uh, personal workers' testaments. Uh, we also have a free program in which we are reaching the youth of America. Uh, the program, which is facilitated through our church youth ministers, uh, involves uh, the in-school peer-to-peer distribution of where uh, you, the youth 
can get to the other youth. As you well know, in, in uh, North Carolina, Gideons can't go into the schools and distribute Bibles, but the youth can do it on peer-to-peer -peer distribution. We call this book the Life Book. And again, it's, it, it's free through the youth ministry. And since 2010 is when we started this program across the United States, we've given out over 25 million of these books. Uh, this helps to uh, uh, this, uh, strengthen the Gideon's longtime uh, standing of placing the, the word of God into the hands of the youth. We're also telling the youth about, and adults, about we've got these little app programs that you can put on Apple and iPhones that uh, the program itself is the is a full, complete Bible, and it has over a thousand different dialects. We can use this when we go into foreign countries, when we ta uh, minister to them about the gospel, and it can be read out loud back to them, or you can read it yourself. I sometimes use it when I can't sleep at night, and I turn on, a, on his word, and I can hear it, different people speaking back to me. It's like a storytelling to me, and there's no better way to fall asleep than hearing God's word. Um, we also um, <clears throat> uh, offer to anybody in the congregation, if you'd like to be a Gideon, I'd be more than glad to speak to you after the service, but we also have a, a, a program called um, Friends of the Gideons, and if you look on the back of your bulletin, you'll see a website called friendsofthegideons.org. It's free, it doesn't cost anything, but if you don't want to be a full member, we well, can be a praying member of Gideons, but what it offers you is the ability to go online and you can order these personal workers' testaments. The only thing different is that it doesn't have the emblem on the front as Friends of the Gideon. You can get them in the English Standard Version, King James Version, or even Spanish Version. Those are the three versions you can, you can order. Also, um, the, and lastly, I'd like to tell you a little bit about a uh, program that we're offering as a resource to churches. It's a two and a half hour training program in which we uh, teach the congregations. I've already talked to uh, Pastor Brian about this. It's called, uh, the course name is called Conversations, a simple approach to sharing the, the gospel, or sometimes we call it conversational evangelism. You can learn what is in the gospel, why we share the gospel, the basics for sharing, and the tools and resources. And we can do this at any time. It's a two and a half hour program. We can do it during Sunday school time. We can do it on Saturdays, whenever, whenever it's most convenient. And it's a great way of being able to help out your pastor and being able to learn and share what we call the good news. In fact, we don't even use the word gospel. We use good news. Because you never know when you have to share it with a family member or uh, somebody else that you might meet in the grocery store line but it's a great way. And the last half or the last hour of the, pro, of the uh, training program, I really like because you actually practice and you do role playing in the class. And it helps you to be able to take the gospel outside the four walls of your, of your church here and tell others because I think you all can agree right now, we have a very divided country and divided world that's lost and looking for hope. And, uh, I know the pastor's going to be talking a little bit about Ezekiel preaching to those dead bones and how the breath of God is going to be breathed into them. And right now, we need the breath of God, and a lot of people are looking for uh, the hope of Jesus. So I, I hope you consider that. Again, thank you, congregation. If you would, uh, please pray with me as we close. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for this time that uh, you've given me this opportunity to share with this uh, wonderful congregation of that loves you uh, and works uh, your word through uh, mission work. Uh, we just ask a special blessing on those 14 members going to Banner Elk, Lord, and just give them safety on the road and safety during the, uh, the mission trip, Lord. And I ask you to give your hand of protection upon Trinity United Methodist here, Lord, and just love on them like you've always loved us first, Lord. And, and uh, most of all, Lord, we just ask you to be with uh, Pastor Brian, in the coming days and months as he leads his flock to uh, take the word to those that are looking uh, for the hope and love of Jesus. And Lord, if, uh, if you do this all in your will, Lord, that we will forever give you the praise, honor, and glory, and we ask all these things in his name. Amen. Thank you.
If you would like to give a donation today to the Gideon Ministry, um, Mr. Miller will recess out with me after our worship service, and you can give a donation at that time if you would like. This morning, our first scripture lesson comes to us from Psalm chapter 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth, who have displayed your splendor above the heavens. From the mouth of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength because of your adversaries to make the enemy and the revengeful cease. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you take notice of him? and the Son of Man, that you care for him. Yet you have made him a little lower than God, and you crown him with glory and majesty. You make him to rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And also from Ezekiel, chapter 37, beginning in verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones. He caused me to pass among them round about, and behold... There were very many on the surface of the valley, and lo, they were very dry. He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, that you may come to life. I will put sinews on you, make flesh grow back on you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you, that you may come alive, and you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied, and as I was, as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, sinews were on them, and flesh grew, and skin covered them, and there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may come to life. So I prophesied as, I, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they came to life and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope has perished. We are completely cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of them. Out of your graves, my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord." When I have opened your graves and caused you to come out of your graves, my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you will come to life, and I will place you on your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and done it, declares the Lord. May God bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of these portions of God's holy word, the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, I pray this morning that you will anoint me afresh with your Holy Spirit, 
that I might proclaim your word with power, love, and truth, that people will be drawn closer to you, and you, O Lord, be glorified through it. In your holy name we do pray. Amen. Many of us may never have heard the name Edwin Hatch. Edwin Hatch was an educated man from Pembroke College in Oxford, England. He became an Anglican priest and he ministered to the people living in the slums of East London before he received a teaching position at Trinity College in Quebec, Canada. When Hatch later returned to Oxford, he became the Bampton Lecturer, the reader in ecclesiastical history, and the Hibbert Lecturer. And Hatch became recognized as an authority on early church history, presenting eight lectures in 1880. Those lectures were translated into other languages. But probably each of us know the hymn that he wrote that became famous, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. It was first published privately in 1878, and it was later published by his widow in 1890. And listen to the simple yet deep and profound words of this hymn. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure, until with thee I will one will to do and to endure. Breathe on me, breath of God, till I am wholly thine, till all this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Breathe on me, breath of God, so I shall never die, but live with thee in perfect life of thine eternity. Brothers and sisters, when we arrive at Ezekiel 37, the Israelites, or a good number of Israelites, have already been transported to Babylon in exile. And, Je and Ezekiel is left behind, and as he and the, those who remained in Jerusalem began to look around them, they believed that this is a new beginning. Although it's small, it could be possible. God had promised in Ezekiel 36 that he would renew Israel for his own name's sake. And now in chapter 37, God takes Ezekiel to a valley full of dry bones. God calls me to pass among the bones, round and about. And behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and lo, they were very dry. And then God said to me, Zeke, can these bones live? And I said, God said, I said, God, only you know that. And then God commanded Ezekiel to preach to the dry bones. Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, that you may come to life. I will put tendons and ligaments and muscles on you, make flesh grow back on you and cover you with skin, and put breath in you that you may come to life, and you will know that I am the Lord. When my dad pastored two churches outside of Henderson, North Carolina, one of them was named Rehoboth and the other was Harris Chapel. The parsonage was right next to Rehoboth. And every once in a while, my mom would go over to the sanctuary to practice a piano. I was about two to three years old at the time, and I would go with her. And she said that I would haul over a chair, put it in the pulpit, stand on the chair, and begin preaching to an empty sanctuary of pews. And she did not remember anything that I preached about, but I preached to her and a bunch of empty pews. 
But just as Ezekiel preached to the dry bones, I preached to those wooden, empty pews. But there was one major difference. When Ezekiel prophesied, there began to be a noise and a rattling. And the bones came together, and Ezekiel looked, and sure enough, there were tendons and ligaments and muscles growing back on the bones, and then skin covering the bones. And when he looked, there were all the signs of life, but there was no breath in it. These bones now looked like human beings again, but they had no life in them at all. Is this how we feel sometimes? Do we look alive and yet feel dead inside? This is what Ezekiel saw in the Valley of Bones until the Lord said, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may come to life. And so I prophesied as God commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they came to life, and they stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. It is the breath of God that made these dry bones live, and it is the breath of God that can make us alive as individuals, as a nation, and as a world the Holy Spirit breathed into us can bring about revival in our church and in our nation and around the world. But do we want revival? Do we want revival? During our men's huddle this past week, Norm prayed for revival across the land and in the world. And over this past week, I also encouraged everybody to recite the hymn, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. And when we have been praying this hymn, we are also praying for revival in our lives. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus Show me the way to the Father, and we shall know the joy of Jesus. The star of my life is Jesus. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. And these are words of asking Jesus to make us alive in him. In other words, we're praying for revival in our own lives, in our own hearts. And when Ezekiel saw the bones come to life, God told him what the vision meant. Zeke, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried up and our hope has perished and we are completely cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves. My people and I will bring you to the land of Israel. And then you will know that I am the Lord when I have opened up your graves, and I will put my spirit within you, and you will come to life. And I will place you on your land, and then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it. And that is a promise of revival. I will put my spirit within you and you will come to life. Do we really want to live for Jesus? Do we really want revival in our personal lives or in our church or our country? If we do, then let's pray for revival. Just like the banner says, come Holy Spirit, revive us again. And during each annual conference, we sing as a first hymn, as the joint sessions combined together, the hymn, are, And Are We Yet Alive? And this is one of the verses. Lord, 
preserved by your power divine to full salvation here. Again in Jesus' praise we join and in his sight appear. Then let us make our boast of his redeeming power, which saves us to the uttermost, till we can sin no more. Let us take up the cross till we the crown obtain, and gladly reckon all things lost, so we may Jesus gain. God brings revival. We just need to make ourselves available. And if we want revival in our lives or in our church, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to actively participate in the activities that are presented before us, like voyages or VBS or RCS, participate in Sunday school or other opportunities that might come our way? And maybe you hear a voice that says, maybe I should sign up. But then you say, no, maybe I want to wait until somebody else signs up first. I want to give them that opportunity. That might be God prompting you to sign up to participate. The bones in the valley, they came to life when God breathed into them. And they began to be active. Holy Spirit, breathe on us this morning and revive us again so that we might actively seek to be transformed into the godly holiness that you long for us to be. And so I encourage us to continue to recite, I want to walk as a child of the light daily as a prayer for your personal life. And if you have not if you do not have a copy, just let me know after worship and I will print one off for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning we have several... P Before we pray, we have our choir.
This morning we have several people who are on our prayer list. We would like to continue to remember our mission team. Also, Carol Thornburg and Bob Hansen in our prayers. Carol Vernon and her mother. Also, Jamie, the Creech family, and the people in the Ukraine. We would like to remember the Gideons. Christy Bushka and Eddie and Gail Lindsay. Shanda Prince and Riley Ratchford. Also, Debbie Fredericks and Bobby Waters. Vicki Fisher and Stephanie Fry and Troy Woolard. As we prepare to go to the Lord in prayer, if you have anyone that you would like to add to our prayer list, please let the church office know. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Holy Lord, we come before your throne this morning, for you are God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. You have unfolded before our eyes a story of salvation, amazing to all of us, and you are the source of breath. You are the Word made flesh. You are the Spirit of life. You are the Maker and the Son of Man, our Holy Comforter. You are for us and with us and ahead of us, and you are the source of all life yesterday, today, and forevermore. You are the God and holy mystery, the three persons in one. We come to you this morning praying for your presence in the lives of those who are dear to us. We pray for our mission team. We pray for the people in the Ukraine, and the people in Russia, and for a quick resolution to the conflict. We pray for the Gideons as they share your word throughout this world. We pray, Lord, for the Creech family, for Carol and her mother. We pray for Jamie. We pray for Bob and Carol and Christy. We lift up Eddie and Gail and Shanda and Riley. We lift up Debbie and Bobby, Vicki and Stephanie and Troy to you that you might minister to their needs as well as the needs of those that we mention silently in our hearts before you this morning. Lord, we are forever grateful for always hearing our prayers, for your abiding presence in our time of need, and your abiding presence with those who are in need. Lord, we pray your comfort around those who mourn, that we might mourn with them, that you will bring joy to those who have experienced success, that we might rejoice with them. And Lord, we pray and give you so much thanks for your Holy Spirit, who makes known to us of you and your Son and our great need for Jesus in our lives. We thank you for Jesus Christ, who died our death and rose for our sakes and taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And now, as forgiven before our Lord, we have the opportunity to give our gifts and our offerings.
glorious Lord, we thank you for every way that you have blessed our lives, and we give a portion back to you this morning. We pray that these gifts and offerings will glorify your Son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We invite you to remain standing as we sing our final hymn, I'll Serve Thee. Thank you. You may be seated, and we invite those who will be going on our mission work team to come forward as we commission you for next week. Those persons who are a part of our work team for next week will be Jean and Amber Bushka, Johnny and Kathy Maddox, Chuck Jernigan, John and Linda Griffin, Roy and Betty Wetherington, Tony LaFon, Carol and Scott Thornburg, and Duffy and Brian Huffman. And I invite you to join me in the commissioning that will be on our screen. All who take upon themselves the name of Christ are called into ministries of love and service by the example of Christ. As members of our community begin their work among the people of Western North Carolina, we pray the blessings of God in this community upon their endeavors. And for everyone, let us join together. We recognize you as ambassadors of this congregation in ministry with the people of Western North Carolina and dedicate you to service in the name of Jesus Christ. Through our prayers, we will be united with you in your work. May God richly bless your labors. Let us pray. Almighty God, look with favor upon our work team to Banner Elk. Reaffirm their commitment to follow Christ and to serve in his name and give them courage, patience, and vision and strengthen them as they serve you and others 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we invite you to, as they return to their seats, to thank them and to pray for them in the weeks ahead. And also, I'm going to invite... And also, I invite everyone to rise for our benediction. And also, Mr. Miller will um, recess out with me. So if you would like to give a donation to the Gideons this morning, you are able to do so. May the love of God surround you. May the love of God uplift you. May the love of God stand with you through the challenges that lie ahead. May the love of God convince you in every situation. Go now to be Christ in the world. Amen. Thank you.